Most plant-based cheeses rely on a lot of oil and fat to achieve the melt and the stretch of the cheese. For good whole food plant-based cooking, we have to change our minds about cheese, change our thinking. What if it was already in a melted form? Then we wouldn't need all that oil and fat. Welcome to Comfort Food Farms, the plant-based home cooking channel. If we haven't met before, I'm Kari Greger. I'm glad you've tuned in. Now, let's get to making that melted mozzarella cheese. You will need raw cashews, half a cup, plant-based yogurt, store-bought or homemade. Now we made this yogurt last week. Look in the description for the link. Nutritional yeast. There is one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. Apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon. One tablespoon of lemon juice. You'll need a quarter cup of either rejuvelac, which is a fermented grain water, or wine. This is a white wine, a white Zinfandel. It gives a really nice flavor to this mozzarella. Then later on, so we're going to blend all that together, but later on you will need to have tapioca starch. There is two and a half tablespoons of tapioca starch here and we need some more salt because that's where we want cheese because of the saltiness. And so we're going to put more salt in there. There is one and a half teaspoons of salt. You'll need half a cup of water and agar, which is a type of seaweed. It's a gelatin. So this is a great plant-based gelatin. Before I forget, if you are receiving good information from this video, please like it, subscribe, and hit that bell below so that you will receive a notification the next time a plant-based recipe is posted. One third cup of cashews need to be soaked. So I'm going to put hot water on here, boiling hot water. We'll set that aside for half an hour or so. Let's start putting things into the Vitamix. We have our cashews, which are nice and soft, soaked. And we'll put those into the blender. One and a half cups of yogurt. This is such a nice thick yogurt. Very tart. It's going to give this cheese marvelous flavor. We have nutritional yeast, garlic powder, and salt. Need a little bit of salt in this to make it have some savory flavor. When you make something yourself, you have total control of the salt, sugar, and fat. So we are in control of how much salt gets put into this. We've got wine. This is white Zinfandel wine. Previously I used Rejuvelac, which is a fermented green water. If, if we were gonna culture this, but I don't need to culture this because I made the yogurt myself and it is fantastically tart. I don't think I want any more tartness in my mozzarella. Make sure it's all down and we're off to the blender. I'm 
I'm going to get the agar going. Pour half a cup of water into a saucepan. Sprinkle the half teaspoon of agar into the water. And now we're going to cook it on the stove. Agar is a seaweed gelatin. And when we're making mozzarella, it is what melts in the mozzarella. We can cook this agar with water and it will hold a shape. Then when it has heat applied to it, it relaxes a little bit. So this is what's going to give us the sort of meltiness of our mozzarella. The tapioca starch is the secret ingredient that gives us the stretch. Now cooking agar is a uh, kind of a patient process. You've, you're trying to develop the uh, gelatin. So you would cook it until it is dissolved and it'll get kind of gelatinous and you almost think it's, it's cooked too much, but it isn't. You have to get to a certain point. So that's why I'm going to have a video running here and I'll show you what it looks like. It gets kind of glossy, a little bit slow moving for water. I don't have a whole lot of agar in here. Just have to think about mozzarella in a different way. Why does mozzarella have to be solid before we use it? And it has to melt in the oven. We might as well put it on in a melted state and then we don't have to have all that fat and oil. When you cook it yourself, you have total control over the fat, salt, and sugar. There, I think we've activated it. It just has kind of a glossy, and you can tell when I, when I scrape the bottom, it kind of leaves a track. There, that was a good shot there. See? You can see that there's just kind of a latency to it. All right, I think we're done with this. Just has a slow moving, looks like very liquid jello. Let's take a look at this lovely cheese so far. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it smells wonderful. And so smooth. You can check the blend. Wow, this is going to be some gorgeous cheese. Mmm, lick my finger. It's wonderful. Now, it's good to taste it. Uh, right now because I find that this is very tart. If it needed some more tartness so that it was more of a, a cheesiness, I would put it into the jar, put the cloth over top of it, secure that with a band so the dust doesn't get in there, and let that sit at room temperature for 24 hours. But we cultured this marvelous yogurt last week and it is very tart and it's beautiful. So I'm going to just make this into some mozzarella right now. We're going to put in one tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, two and a half tablespoons of tapioca starch or tapioca flour. This is what will make our cheese stretch. It's fantastic stuff. Then I'm putting in more salt. Now this may be more salt than what you want. I'm trying to achieve a real mozzarella taste and it's cheese, frankly, is very salty. You do not have to put as much salt in there if you're trying to control that. So that's totally up to you, how much you want to put in there. Often when you're used to having less salt, then you don't notice it and you don't, wouldn't miss it. But if this was served to someone who's used to having the regular mozzarella, they're not even going to be able to tell. It's going to be that good. All right, now I'll just drizzle in this agar that has cooled. 
and we go to the blender to pulse it. Cheese. Because of the apple cider, the vinegar, and the salt, this cheese will keep in the fridge for likely two months, at least a month. We have a starch in here, so we should keep stirring. Keep stirring, keep stirring. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring. Have it on medium-high heat, like you're cooking a pudding or a custard or something like that. Now I'm getting some lumps already. Look at that, see? I love these red spatulas. They do such a wonderful job of cleaning the surfaces off, and yet they are heat resistant so I can cook my cheese with it. There we go, we're almost there. See how it's thickened up so nice? We want to get it to the point where you have a gloss to it. There we go, now we're getting some sheen. It kind of has a, a sheen to it. Look at the stretch we've got. No oil, no added fat. There'll be a little bit of fat in there because there's fat in the nuts. Between the yogurt and the cashews we put in there has a little bit of, oh, see, look at that, look at that. Gorgeous cheese. The mozzarella has cooled a bit and so, we are going to put it into bags. You could scoop it onto your pizza and just blob it on if you wanted to, but I have come up with a way that makes it look a lot more like regular pizza. This is a scale. I love having a kitchen scale. I calculated about five or six ounces is enough for a pizza. Just go straight to six ounces. I've got a bag inside a cup so it's clean. I have a vacuum packer so I'm going to be vacuum packing this. You can just use a sandwich bag. That'll work. Now something else that I have done is freeze it and then grate it so that it melts on top of your pizza. This seems to be the easiest method. Here are my bags, all vacuum packed, ready for the refrigerator. I will just write on here a little notation so that I know what's inside of it and I put the date on it so that I know how old it is when it's in the fridge. This is gonna keep for a month or so, maybe two, especially when it's vacuum packed. Here is my pizza. All prepped for the oven. So I'll just take the corner here and snip it. And I don't want it to fall on the pizza. It's like piping on something. We just do this and you squeeze. I often like to just kind of smoosh it around a little bit. It helps with it, the look of it. Sometimes it can look kind of like it's been, well, piped on the top of the pizza. Help it relax, ready to go into the oven. Total control, it's 
excuse me, of salt, fat, and sugar. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up below. Next week, I'm going to be making plant-based ricotta cheese. So, while you're down there, subscribe and ring that bell so that you will receive notification when that recipe is posted. Thanks for watching.